this is a series of lectures on metals and uh, the first thing that we will do when we discuss metals is to figure out where in the periodic table these metals exist. Now I have drawn a periodic table right in front of you and uh, it's the periodic table of elements. It contains all the groups from group 1 to, uh, to 18 and the older periodic tables would have, uh, would have slight differences. This group 13 would actually be called group 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and so on. So so these bottom, uh, these middle transition metals would not be labeled when you're discussing this uh, uh, for older periodic tables, but but basically uh, the shape is going to be exactly the same. Now, um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to locate where in the periodic table metals exist. Now I've drawn a staircase and this darker line that represents a staircase and this the reason why this staircase is important because is because to the left of the staircase line all the elements are classified as they are classified as metals and on the other hand to the right side of this line all the elements are classified as non-metals so as you can you can see most of the elements would uh, be classified as metals in this case if you look at the periodic table so i'm going to shade the part which are which would represent which would represent non metals so these areas over here these elements over here they would all be classified as non metals even these noble gases they would be classified and one more element which uh, which would be classified as a metal is also it's it's uh, hydrogen so we're going to uh, classify these shaded red areas as uh, non-metals whereas the rest of the elements would be classified as metals now now if you look at the staircase line there's a there's a very uh, fine dividing line which is uh, which is represented by, represented by the staircase now elements that lie on that line they probably are called they're called metalloids because uh, because they're right in the middle uh, on one side they are metals, on the other side they are non-metals. Some of the elements on the staircase line represent properties which would apply to both metals and non-metals. So these are called metalloids. So I'm going to shade these metalloids in in blue. So these elements over here, it includes silicon as well. That would also be classified as a metalloid. Then you have germanium and you have arsenic. So these elements, are classified as metalloids because they're going to represent some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. So the rest of the elements, apart from the shaded uh, uh, red area, the rest of the elements are all classified as metals. We are going to go over a few physical properties and explain the differences in terms of physical properties and appearance between a metal and a non-metal. The first one, uh, the first major difference is that metals would uh, appear to be very lustrous. They would be, they would be shiny, whereas uh, non-metals on the other hand, they appear to be not very lustrous, they're not lustrous. and they are very dull to uh, to look at. So if you have a non-metal, uh, that would probably be, uh, for example, if you if you have a non-metallic solid, for example, graphite or carbon or any other non-metallic solid or sulfur, they would not be very shiny. Whereas metals appear to be generally, they appear to be very, very shiny. The second difference is uh, that metals tend to have high melting points. Now they tend to have high melting points, but there are a few exceptions. Uh, for example, group one metals, although they do have high melting points around 150 or 200, but they're not very extremely high. But there's one exception that has a very low melting point, which are, which is around minus 37, and that comes out to be comes out to be mercury. So so you have a few exceptions, mercury. Now. Mercury has a relatively very low melting and boiling point, but that's only one exception. So if you're talking about metals in general, they're going to have high melting points. Uh, 
whereas on the other hand normals tend to have they tend to have relatively low melting points but again there are a few exceptions and those exceptions include those giant covalent structures like uh, uh, like diamond or graphite or, sil or silica which was SiO2 so you have a few exceptions uh, even for non-metals that are, are going to have very very low melting uh, very very high melting points so there are a few exceptions but generally metals have high melting points and non-metals have low melting points the third difference is that metals tend to be very malleable which means that they can be reshaped you can you can hammer them into different shapes so you can easily reshape them bend them twist them so metals can uh, can be bent into different shapes and they're also they're also ductile which means what the word ductile means is that you can draw them into they can be drawn into wires now most of the time if a non-metal is a solid it's, it's going to be a low melting point solid but it's going to be very brittle so so one major difference is that metals can be easily uh, reshaped into, into different shapes whereas non-metals tend to be very very brittle for example if you take iodine crystals and you put them in your uh, if you try to crush them they're going to break apart into smaller and tinier tinier pieces the fourth major difference between a metal and non-metal is that generally metals are very good conductors they are very good conductors of both heat and electricity whereas on the other hand if you have a non-metals they are generally very poor conductors of heat and electricity but again there are a few exceptions when it comes to non metal as well and that exception is that graphite is a relatively very good conductor of electricity so generally speaking uh, excluding all the exceptions metals tend to be very good conductors whereas non-metals tend to be very bad or poor conductors